Okay, so hello guys, in this tutorial, like I said, we're going to make the arrow that you saw on the first, on the video. Anyways, I have already imported an arrow, so this is the arrow we're going to use. So let's get started. Uh, first, go to Game Object, it will tell you why image, and this will add a new canvas on a new canvas on the screen. You don't really have to understand much about it. Drop the, sp the sprite in there, and this is just the way I did it. You can also do it under uh, ten of other ways. Anyways, you want this canvas to be not on screen space but on world space. So this is the canvas. So the canvas is at zero. So if I find the arrow, the arrow is in there. I want it to stay here and much much smaller. So I'll just drop this down tons. So as it can just like be like that. Something small. That's fine. And what I want to do is whenever we right click, we want to put that arrow in there to uh, to tell us the direction of the of where our player will go. And this is actually something that I didn't know. So I looked it up on the internet, and what we're going to use is this part over here. Uh, I'll give you this uh, link if you want. I'll give you the link. I'll put the link in the description. So, anyways, first thing I want to do is that you want to receive the information about the arrow so I'll put here public uh, transform it can be anything you want to transform a game object an image just you have to pass the information arrow and whenever we start pressing the key the button and we find the uh, and we find a thing we want the arrow to snap to snap to the position of that uh, of the ball so if the arrow was uh, Unseeable, bam! You want it to. If you are using this ball, you want it to snap to here or to here. So I'll make the arrow dot trans dot position be equal to the object be equal to the bashable object dot transform dot position. And because we want the the arrow to appear behind the object, I'll just use here arrow.translate right? and this lets us uh, move the arrow a certain distance and I want to move it only on the z-axis so I want to move it say 10 units behind something like this and now we have to add the arrow to the player here so I'll just grab the image and put it onto here now you'll see that if I play and if I go onto it, you see that arrow goes onto whatever I wanted. Now all you have to do is to make it change the direction. And like I said, we'll be using this script. So I just copy paste it. And when do we want the arrow to change rotation? We want to change rota the rotation of the arrow when the button is down. So else if input dot get button uh, only got button is needed fire two and you can bash only then I want the arrow to move and of course I'm just pasting it and this transform dot rotation is the final rotation of the arrow so instead of having here transform dot rotation what you actually want is arrow dot transform dot rotation save it and you'll see that the arrow will be rotating now it's it's a bit off as you can see it's 90 degrees off I don't know why that's there but just delete it from there save it and then now the arrow is a, is is always telling you the direction which is cool when you don't see the mouse if this is, was a game if this was a final build of the game and of course I want to make the arrow visible and invisible so here on the start I will make the arrow be invisible by default so game object dot set active equals to false so it is invisible and then we want to make it equal be visible when we put the button down here true and we want it to make it back go back to invisible when we put the button up so in here true 
True, there you go, save. And now you'll see that the arrow is doing exactly what you want. There you go. There's only one thing that one one time where it's not doing it, which is when I when the time stops and I don't use the the bash. So the time stops here in the counter. All I have to do is paste it here as well and it will disappear. There you go. And now you can see the arrow stops uh, disappears also when we don't use the bash. Uh, there's only one more thing that I'll do to to this to this tutorial or to this uh, or to this mechanic, which is I'll make a, a, a little effect so that we just like in the game, uh, but not not as much complex. Just a little effect so that you can't see that the object that the player actually shifted position like this because the player just went from here to here so I'll just instantiate a, a lens flare here just to make it cool so as you can see you have to have a flare, a flare layer uh, already in the in the main camera and I'm going to import the, the assets that are effects import it all although we, we, won't, we will only use one Now let's create a new game object, add a, a flare to it, a lens flare, and by default this this is invisible as you can see, you can't see it over here so it's transparent because it has no flare, but because we downloaded the assets, we can actually pick a flare, and as you can see it works fine. Uh, as long as you don't have a background you can put it wherever you want. And of course you want you can put this whatever you want even here. Uh, be careful because of the layers. You can put it, you can bring it closer to you or away. You know I'll just pick a a place. And what I will will do is whenever we use the ability itself, I'll essentiate a big flare over here so that so that we basically can't see what's happening. So that's that. So you have your art flare. Anyways, I'll use this the sun one. And now I'm going to animate it. So here, click on the lens flare that you created. Let's name it lens flare. Go to animation, uh, create lens flare anim. Add property. And by the way, before I add property, this uh, as you can see, the lens flare is just static. So, what I want to do is to bring back the intensity to something high like this real quickly. So, it's 2, and then it goes to 0 again. Okay, and that's our animation. Bam. Let's save, and let's see how this looks here. And this is looping right now, so, and I don't want it to loop, so just uncheck loop time, and let's see how it's looking. So as you can see, it just brought, it just was that little thing, it just appeared that little thing, and that's because of the way that the, the lens flare work. Let me show you this thing. If I make the animator inactive and play, the, you see that the brightness is at almost 2, but you don't see any flare. And that's because, the, I don't know why, the flares initially are not there, and if you wait a bit, it appears, so uh, uh, all I have to do is to crank this up to counteract that effect that for some reason has and just crank this fade speed up and now you'll see that it's instant so that's the basic effect, of course I want this flare to disappear, to be destroyed so destroy by time and I want to destroy it after 2 seconds and of course make sure that the animator is active like that and let's make this a uh, a prefab like so and now here create a public game object effect and we want to instantiate this effect whenever we put the button up so here instantiate the effect with a transform.position 
and and the quaternion dot identity and just like that we made it a bit cooler oh there's some problems with this probably I don't know I don't really know why but never mind it let's wait a bit for it to compile there you go and here just delete this from here just delete the lens fair from the scene and go into the player and and give it the effect like that and if I play to see that a big flare appears so that I can so that I can actually see what happens you know it's a bit you know it's, it's not very well uh, done but you get the point because that was some big a little bit big of a flare so I'll just put it back in here and do it like so and maybe change this back to something lower save and apply and let's see how it does and again this is just trial and error until you got good values and of course I forgot to that I actually want to instantiate the effect not on the player's position but on the position of the object so we just put here bashable object dot transform the position instead of just transform the position never mind that stuff hit play and you'll see that now it instantiates right in where we want it just to obfuscate the effects just like in the original game anyways that's it thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial